Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to a late show, especially all. One would be too few. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, we have all been up to our earlobes in COVID precautions for almost a year. But now, there's a new contagion sweeping the country. America's got a bad case of the hopes. Thanks to new vaccine availability, we're starting to see the syringe at the end of the tunnel. Let's see, though Johnson & Johnson has a new vaccine, they didn't have the capacity to produce the volume of doses that America needed. So the Biden administration convinced rival company Merck Pharmaceuticals to help produce Johnson & Johnson's single-shot coronavirus vaccine. Do you know what this means? This could be the beginning of a bold new era of pharmaceutical crossovers, like Dayquil Viagra. You know their slogan, your cold just got hot, get up and go. This new capacity means, well, tell them what it means, Joe. We're now on track to have enough vaccine supply for every adult in America by the end of May. That is so much sooner than anybody thought. When's the latest I can receive my dose? It's gonna be May. Thank you, Surgeon General Timberlake. Hashtag Free Britney. President Biden is also making a push to get all teachers inoculated by the end of March. So if I'm an educator, when's the latest I could receive my dose? It's gonna be March. <laughs> Another good news, Dolly Parton. You may remember that she is just fantastic. You may also remember she gave a million dollars of her own money to Vanderbilt University to help develop the Moderna vaccine. So it was thrilling yesterday to see her account tweet out this photo of her getting the shot with a caption, Dolly gets a dose of her own medicine, a life-saving miracle, and she got the vaccine. Now, for ease of on-camera jabbing, Dolly went the extra mile and wore a stylish, easy needle access, cold shoulder top. Okay, very cool, very nice, Dolly, but I don't recommend trying something similar for your colonoscopy. And like I expect to do when I get the vaccine, Dolly bursts into song. I wanted to tell everybody, I think you should get out there and do it too. I even changed one of my songs to fit the occasion. It goes, <clears throat> vaccine, 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 vaccine. I'm begging of you, please don't hesitate. Vaccine, 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 vaccine. Because once you're dead, then that's a bit too late. Okay. That's a very important message. And also Dolly's darkest tune since, islands in the stream, eroding over time, nothing ever lasts. We're just food for worms. We're just bags of meat. <laughs> Keeps going from there. Even more hopeful, it sounds better when Kenny Rogers is singing with you. Even more hopeful, it's getting easier to qualify for a vaccine. North Carolina just announced that on March 24th, the state will open eligibility to people living in group settings, additional frontline workers, and people who have ever smoked 100 cigarettes. Of course, North Carolina is a tobacco state. In Wisconsin, you have to chug 100 gallons of milk. In Detroit, you have to eat 100 cars. Hey, remember how there was an insurrection uh, back in January? Capitol Police are warning it could come back because of a QAnon theory claiming the ex-president will return to power tomorrow March 4th. Now, I'm no psychologist, but you could say they're suffering from March madness. Also, they're clinically insane. <laughs> but there's method to this cuckoo. You see, Q followers were heartbroken on Inauguration Day. It was supposed to be the day that the storm came that would keep their guy actually in office. So they've moved the date of the storm when all the arrests of the celebrities and the Democrats happen to March 4th, which was the date of presidential inaugurations up until 1933. Yes, follow me down the rabbit hole. They ended it in 1933, but add up 1933, three, you get 16. Add up one plus six, you get seven. What is seven? Three plus four. Three, four. March 4th, when we shall march forth. I see patterns where none exist. But the enhanced security may not be necessary because some QAnon adherents are now skeptical as to the origins or validity of the theory. You know what, now that I think about it, 
this March 4th thing doesn't have the same ring of truth as Tom Hanks eats babies. Still, where there's a will, there's a way to cash in because the former president's hotel in Washington, D.C. has been jacking up prices around March 4th. Sounds cynical, but they are offering premium services. If you're exhausted from travel, you can just call the front desk and ask the concierge to hang Mike Pence. Ultimately, Q supporters are just going to have to face the fact that their guy lost in the highest voter turnout in U.S. history. Republicans have accepted it. They've looked at voter turnout and realized it is time to stop voter turnout. They've already started with a tidal wave of anti-voting legislation. So far, GOP lawmakers have written 253 bills with provisions that restrict voting access in 43 states, like Georgia, where, following the GOP losing the presidential election and two Senate seats in a runoff, state Republicans passed a bill that would limit absentee and early voting. You see, Democrats tend to like early voting, but Georgia Republicans want you to pick your candidates at the very last minute. That's why they kept David Perdue right by the register. Critics say this bill disproportionately affects voters of color, but the bill's sponsor claims it is designed to begin to bring back the confidence of our voters back into our electoral system. Okay, but the Republican governor, the Republican secretary of state, the Republican voting systems manager all said it was a fair election. So there's plenty of confidence in the election. You're just confident you're going to lose it, so you're tilting the playing field. That's like the NFL restricting Tom Brady to restore confidence in the Kansas City Chiefs. And George is not alone. Legislators in 18 states have introduced 40 bills to impose new or more stringent voter ID requirements for in-person or mail voting, and 14 bills in nine states would make the excuse requirement more stringent for absentee voting or eliminate no excuse mail voting altogether. Yeah, if you want to vote absentee, the GOP demands a good excuse, like a note from your doctor or your caddy. In the Supreme Court, could be about to open the voter suppression floodgates, because yesterday they heard oral arguments in a case about an Arizona law that makes it a crime for campaign workers, community activists, and most other people to collect ballots for delivery to polling places and requires election officials to discard ballots cast at the wrong precinct. When Justice Amy Coney Barrett asked the GOP's lawyer why Republicans cared about that, he was pretty candid. Because it puts us at a competitive disadvantage relative to Democrats, adding, politics is a zero-sum game. Yes, it's a zero-sum game. The GOP thinks Democrats should have zero votes and they should have some. But zero-sum or not, the right to vote is not a game. Otherwise, the Gettysburg Address would have ended, of the people, by the people, for the Yahtzee! So, this lawyer admitted Republicans don't really believe in democracy. Instead, they believe in, I forget, what is it? <laughs> Mitch McConnell's looking good. I think he's had some work done. A little freshen up. But here's the thing. The Arizona law these Republicans are fighting for in the Supreme Court was already in effect during the last election, and they lost anyway. So if Republicans are going to game the system against the will of the people, they're going to have to get a little harsher. Just go back to poll tests with unanswerable questions like, guess how many jelly beans are in a jar, or how do you fold a fitted sheet? <laughs> or put the polling place in the center of a maze and have it guarded by a minotaur. Or Ted Cruz. Either way, there's a lot of bull crap. Speaking of guys who can really shovel it, remember White House physician, current Texas representative, and guy who's pretty sure he heard those teens making fun of his hat, Dr. Ronnie Jackson? The Department of Defense Inspector General just released a report on Dr. Ronnie and his behavior during his tenure as White House physician, and the findings are not good. The report says the Jackson violated the policy for drinking alcohol while on a presidential trip, made sexual and denigrating comments about a female subordinate, and took prescription strength sleeping medication that prompted concerns about his ability to provide proper care. It was the most irresponsible staffing of the White House physician since Bill Clinton appointed Aerosmith. The report focuses on a particular trip uh, to the Philippines where a witness says, as soon as they arrived in Manila, Jackson began drinking in the hotel lobby, then got into a car with a drink in his hand to go out on the town. 
Another witness said they saw Jackson pounding on the door of a female subordinate's room. When she opened the door, Jackson said, I need you. I need you to come to my room. Wow, that is either extremely inappropriate behavior or he couldn't figure out how to work the hotel shower. It's got a knob, but it's also got a lever and a button. One side says hot and the other side says pressure. I just want to wash my body so I can throw up on it again. And it gets grosser because a witness said that Jackson told them that a female medical subordinate who was also on the trip had great <laughs> adding what a nice <laughs> in his defense. That's just the Hippocratic oath he took. First, do no harm. Second, tear me off a piece of that. Third, chug, 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 chug. Jackson denied all the allegations in the report, saying that they are politically motivated and that the inspector general simply resurrected old allegations. That's not the airtight defense he thinks it is. Your Honor, I couldn't have committed these crimes. I've been suspected of them for years. Dr. Ronnie went on to say, I flat out reject any allegation that I consumed alcohol while on duty. Okay, so you're saying you were sober when you said this about the former president? Some people have, uh, you know, just great genes. You know, uh, I told the president that if he had a healthier diet over the last uh, 20 years, he might live to be 200 years old. I don't know. I mean, um, he, uh, he, has incredible, uh, he has incredible genes, I just assume. Okay, to be fair, he doesn't sound drunk there. He sounds like he's smoking crank. Some people, some people just have incredible genes, you know? I have great genes. I could punch through a wall. I need you to come to my room so we can start a band or a restaurant. I'm sad. Let's dance. Okay. Now, let's get to tonight's big story. On a recent flight that was headed to Qatar, a stray cat stowed away, and the cat apparently went on a rampage in the cockpit and was so disruptive that the pilot actually decided to turn the plane around and abandon the flight's scheduled route. It was the most disturbing appearance of a cat on a plane since cats. The cat in question was said to be a feral feline, likely boarded the plane while it was parked in the hangar overnight for cleaning, which means it's time to eliminate the 737's controversial kitty door. And is this true? I'm being told we have a recording of the captain's flight announcement. Uh, attention passengers, this is your captain speaking. We are cruising at 34,000 feet and there is a cat clawing at my face. You may experience some mild turbulence as I staunch the blood flowing from my carotid artery. If there's an air marshal on board, I hope you have a can of tuna. We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Paul Bettany, but when we return, corporations are getting their own cities. Stick around.